Hello everyone, I'm, in this video I'm going to be talking about how to draw molecular orbital diagrams for a pi bond system in case of conjugated alkenes. And I'm going to specifically take an example of uh, pentadiene, dienyl, uh, cation, anion, and the radical. So the arrangement of their uh, pi system molecular orbitals is going to be very, is pretty much going to be the same. The only difference you're really going to have is where their homos and luma is going to be. So before we actually talk about those individual ones, uh, let's focus on maybe the cation. So on the left side, I do have this cation here. And the very first thing you really want to do is uh, be able to count how many unhybridized p orbital you have in each case. So on this left one, I have every single carbon here. So every single carbon on this left one is going to be an sp2 hybridized. And uh, as a result, that leaves one of p orbitals to be unhybridized. And that gives me five p orbitals that are going to be unhybridized. All right. And then kind of same story on this uh, anion. And even for the radical, so every uh, in every single case, you're going to have and a 5p orbital set here that are going to be an unhybridized. And then in addition to that, you also want to be able to actually count how many pi electrons you're really going to be having that are going to be conjugated in the whole system. So in case of an cation, we obviously don't have any electron where the positive charge is, but we do have electrons on those double bonds or on those pi bonds. As a result, this gives me and a system of four pi electrons, all right? And in case of an anion, obviously we do have um, a lone pair of electrons, so that's all, that's gonna be in a delocalized lone pair of electron, and that's gonna be participating in the resonances, so as a result, it's gonna be the part of the conjugation, so that gives me an, a six pi electron system. And in case of a radical, you can say it's gonna be in a five pi, electron system because you only have one electron there that could that's going to be the part of uh, the conjugation with the rest of the system and now let's start out with having these 5p orbitals kind of arranged in this uh, in this way so i have drawn those and uh, the bottom line is if i have five atomic orbitals that are um, unhybridized p orbitals i should be getting a five set of molecular orbitals and um, how I'm going to be arranging those, that's going to be a different question. And the, out, of, out of those five, you're going to have some being bonding molecular orbitals, you're going to have some being anti-bonding, and you're going to have some being non-bonding. So let's talk about uh, having those five different set of uh, molecular orbitals there. So you, um, if I want to start out with these different settings, so first of all, just go ahead and draw these five different sets out and I will worry about how I'm going to be arranging those in a minute. So I'm just going to try to squeeze all of those in one page here. All right, so that should work out fine. Let me just kind of make these a little bit closer to one another. So they're going to have their in energy being increased as you're moving up and you're going to be starting from a very first one and I can I can call these to be, uh, you know, psi one. I can call this to be psi two, psi three, psi three, uh, psi four, and psi five. So those are just you know, different ways of naming these different five uh, sets. So though the set and the arrangement is going to be the same whether you have a cation or an anion or even the radical, it's only going to be how many electrons you're eventually going to have in those molecular orbitals. So the, another thing I do want to talk about, if you have five set of orbitals, uh, five set of unhybridized p orbitals, then the maximum number of nodes you can possibly have would be n minus one. So that would be five minus one, that gives you four. So you're gonna have a maximum number of uh, four um, as far as the nodes go, and the minimum is going to be zero. So your orbitals should be arranged in such a way that you have a zero node here, and you're going to have four nodes at the end of the day right on the top where you're going to have the last orbital. And uh, 
I always tell students to kind of uh, draw the first one and the last one because they are going to be the most easiest to recognize, uh, most easiest to draw as well. And then we fill in the gaps uh, when we when it comes down to the, the side two, side three, and side four. So let's start out with the first one. When you have zero node, that means all these orbitals are going to be in constructive interference. So another way of saying all these orbitals going to be overlapping with one another in phase. So I can go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and shade these out. So when I'm shading them, I'm going to be making all these orbitals in phase. So they are all arranged in the same time. So we're going to have everyone overlapping, uh, giving no node here. So that's going to be zero node. And when it comes down to the last one, which is going to be the a five, uh, psi five. So we, in order to get four nodes, I should not really have any one of those overlapping with one another. So another way of saying, I could say, I would have um, one of them right here, and the next one we out of phase, and then the right after that, the next one would be out of phase again. And the right after that would be out of phase to the previous one. So another way of saying none of those are really uh, doing any sort of constructive interference, but they're all doing a destructive interference. And uh, when it comes down to counting the nodes, you just kind of see wherever their lobes are oriented opposite to one another. So I can draw a line right there. So that would have been your one node. That's your second node. That's your third node. And that's your fourth node. So that's how you're going to get four nodes. And now it comes down to how I'm going to get the rest of the nodes. So as you move up on the line here, we're going to be start increasing the node one at a time. So I started out with zero node on psi one. So that means I'm going to have uh, one node right here. And I'm going to have two nodes here and I'm going to have three nodes here. So that's how the energy is going to be increasing as you increasing the number of these nodes. So when I'm looking at the first one, um, now you think of like, what's the best way I can get one node? And typically the very first node you want to get, it's going to be at the center of this uh, system here. The center of the system sometimes may fall just on the line, but sometimes it may fall on literally on the atom. So in this case, it's going to fall right literally on this atom. So it's not really going to be the part of any overlapping here. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. So this right here this is where your carbon is supposed to be but that's gonna be um one that's that's gonna be the center so as a result it's gonna be used to create a node here so what does that really mean is i may have the first two overlapping with one another with the constructive interference but then the next one is going to be opposite in terms of orientation and it's going to be overlapping with the last one as well so as a result you only get one node in this particular case and now as you move on to the second node or as you move on to get number uh, two number of nodes what's the possible way you can arrange so that you can get a maximum of two nodes and uh, you want to think of uh, and another trick you always want to make sure you do is uh, wherever the nodes going to be your nodes should be at an equal distance from the center so the only best way i can really have two nodes here if i could actually take this um, carbon atom out and create a node there and i can take this carbon atom out and create a node here so i want to go ahead and take those out and, and there were supposed to be carbon atoms there but instead I, we're going to go ahead and create the nodes right there so i would have this oriented to the top and then this would be on the bottom and this this would be on the top so that gives you a total number of two nodes here and now when you look at this fourth one um, and then i want to go ahead and create three nodes and uh, then you want to think of, okay, what's the best way to create three nodes? And like I said, you want to make sure your nodes at, e at, at an equal distance from the center. So this is indeed your center. So what's the best way I can create three nodes? Um, so I want to go ahead and be able to create uh, maybe 
two more nodes from the center. So I want to go ahead and maybe create one node right at the center. So this is where the carbon is supposed to be. And then at an equal distance from the center, might have been there isn't a node right here and there isn't a node right here. So that means if this was pointed up, the next one would be pointed down, and then after that would be pointed up, and this last one would be, would be pointed down. So you technically have more destructive interference here than constructive interference. Um, so this is how you're really going to be drawing them, and this is going to be the setup for whether you have a cation, anion, or radical, as long as you have a five orbital system here. If you have an even number of uh, p orbitals, then typically your center, then your center would be on the line instead of being at the atom, like you have seen in this particular case. Um, as far as uh, counting those as bonding, non-bonding, and anti-bonding, so typically in case of bondings, you would have more in-phase um, interference. So obviously the first one would be your um, bonding molecular orbital. So for this next one, you can clearly see you have uh, constructive interference here. That's the same uh, in-phase overlapping here, in-phase overlapping here. So more in-phase overlapping. So that's going to give you still a bonding molecular orbital. And when you look at the next one, um, there's really not any in-phase overlapping going on. But then at the same time, there's really not any out-of-phase overlapping if you um, think about it, because you know, obviously there isn't a center here. And that's you know, that's that's a line right at the carbon atom. So going from here to here, it's kind of far away to overlap, and um, you have zero numbers of constructive and zero numbers of destructive interferences. So that is actually going to be your non-bonding molecular orbital. And when you look at this next one here, obviously we have uh, more destructive interferences here. We got this and this, that's one of them. And then right after that, we got this and this. So they have more destructive interferences than the constructive interferences. That's going to be your anti bonding molecular orbital. And then finally, obviously, in the last one, you have more destructive interferences. That's from here to here, that's destructive from here to here, that's another destructive from here to here, that's a destructive interference, and so on. Obviously, I forgot to draw this last one here. So that's a, that's also going to be a destructive interference. So more destructive interferences than the constructive interferences, that's going to be your anti-bonding molecular orbital. Now keep in mind, your anti-bonding molecular orbitals are going to be higher in energy than your molecular orbitals, than your atomic orbitals in general. All right, and then these bonding molecular orbitals would be lower in energy. And then this, uh, the non-bonding, is going to be at the same energy level as that of uh, atomic orbitals. So that's how you really want to look at them. Now let's go ahead and fill the electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and start from... Uh, looking at this pi, uh, cation. So when I'm looking at the cation, I know I have four electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and write down all four of them here. I have four, five uh, orbitals set here. So since I have only four electrons, I'm going to have two electrons here, and I'm going to have two electrons here. So that's the end of the story. So this uh, electron, uh, this orbital set was the last one. That was side two that had the electrons. So that would have been your HOMO, which means highest occupied molecular orbital. And the right next to that would be your LUMO. So that would be your lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So that's the thing you really want to have to get out from here. And then if I want to do the same setup on this right side, I'm just going to copy this down on to for the anion and even for the radical. So what's really the difference in case of an anion? So in case of an anion, you're actually going to have a, another set of electrons because there's six pi electrons. So I'm going to be actually filling that up so that make this particular site three to be your homo. And right on the top of that would be the lumo. And then 
the last one where you have the radical. So the radical actually is going to get filled onto this side 3. So that still makes that to be the homo. And the one that's on the top that would be the lumo. So this is how you're really going to be drawing those up. And there are a few tricks here and there you can use. Um, and obviously, if you understand this, you can draw the molecular orbital diagrams for and a four pi for a four orbital set or even for a six orbital sets and, and so on. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.